So today we're going to be making this chromatic aberration effect. This effect is really good if you have something like a black and white image and you just want to make it more interesting, or you have something like a newspaper cutout and you want to make it just look a little bit better. I'm going to show you two very quick ways to do this. Uh, both of them have some disadvantages, so after that I'm going to show you a more detailed method, and it's going to give you a lot more control, uh, but it takes a bit longer to set up. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to make it a preset, so you only have to do it one time. Uh, then make sure you stick around to the very end because I'm going to show you some bonus stuff and it's going to help make your images look even better. So the first effect I'm going to show you is with the built-in chromatic aberrations. This is going to uh, act much like a camera does in real life for chromatic aberration, so you're going to lose a lot of final details with the control. Um, you can see it's kind of extreme. Uh, even if you mess with these, it's always going to be kind of extreme. You're never going to really get uh, granular, uh, fine controls. Um, so in most cases, it's going to be really extreme. Uh, if you want it on the corners, you can swap this here, and it will come on the corners. Uh, but you don't really have too much control with this effect. Uh, you see I'm bringing it in, but it's still it's still pretty extreme. Uh, so the next method I'm going to show you is lets you get a little bit more detail, and you're also able to get the aberrations uh, across the whole image instead of only in the corners like an actual camera would. So the next method is going to be the 3D glasses effect. Uh, it's pretty nice for quick chromatic aberrations, uh, so you want to swap your left and right view to be your photo, uh, then come down here to where it says 3D view and swap this to balance color red and blue. Uh, then it looks like nothing happened, but now you can mess with these sliders, the scene convergence, and the vertical alignment, and that's going to let you uh, drag it out and get some effects. So uh, I like to do 0 0.5 with this, uh, then the second one I like to do negative 0 0.5, and I found that's a pretty good number come out you can see we're getting the chromatic aberration now. Uh, the one thing you might notice is the colors aren't quite correct. Uh, we should be getting a red green blue split but it looks like we only have red and blue. So that's one of the drawbacks with this method but in some cases this might be good if you just want to do something quick. So now I'm going to show you how to do an RGB split and this is going to give you the most control over the chromatic aberration. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is take this layer here, uh, your source image, and duplicate it twice, just hitting Ctrl D. Uh, next you're going to use a set channel, and drag that on the top one. And first thing you want to do is uh, set the green to full off, and the blue to full off. Then on the next one you'll just do, uh, once again, set channel, set the red to full off the uh, green to full off, so I keep the green on and then keep the blue full off. Uh, let's just minimize these, let me hide these so we can see it, and then last time, uh, you're going to do it one more time, you're going to set the red to full off, the green to full off, and this time keep the blue on. So next thing you want to do is set the blend mode to add on all of these so we get back to our original image. Uh, you can keep it normal on the final one actually. Uh, so the next thing you do to get the actual uh, aberration is to, you just want to adjust this just ever so slightly. And you can do the same for this, I like to go in the other direction with it. Uh, you can get kind of different effects depending on, on how you do it, but I think this right here looks nice. Uh, it's very subtle, I think subtle is good with this effect. And now I'll show you how to set a preset for this, so you don't have to slot your lows each time and have this mess in your pre-com. So the way you make this into a preset is a little weird, because there's actually no good way in After Effects to shift RGB layers uh, all in one layer, so uh, we have to do something hacky with the emboss effect, so let me show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to do this on an adjustment layer, so the first thing you need to do is make a new adjustment layer. Uh, then to start, we're going to use the uh, tint effect. And this is how we're going to determine what colors you want. So say we want uh, magenta and cyan uh, chromatic aberration, then we'll just set it like that. Uh, the next thing we'll do is the emboss, and this is actually going to be what we're using to kind of shift it. Uh, so I'll set the relief to something like 2, and then we're going to come back with a composite and add our original source image uh, right back on top of this. And we'll set this to overlay. So now we have a chromatic aberration here, and this is going to be a good preset because you can set the kind of aberration you want uh, just by changing the colors here. Uh, so say you want a red-blue, uh, you could do it just like that. 
I actually like that red color. Uh, I think this was a little darker blue. Sorry, a little lighter blue. So I like the way this looks. Uh, you can play around with it and and see how you like it. Um, I think it's a little extreme, so I, I kind of like to stay in between one and two. Uh, maybe like 1.3 would look nice, or uh, just making it more subtle. So before we actually save this as a preset, uh, sometimes you use this preset and you forget how to use it. So it's nice to set slider controls for everything. Uh, so I like to come in here and add a slider control, and we'll just rename this. To shift and I'm gonna link this shift slider to the relief of the emboss so if you hold alt on this it's gonna open down here and you could just pip whip this to the slider here so now when we change the slider it's gonna change the relief I'm gonna set this to one uh, another important thing is this has to be on adjustment layer. If you do it on the actual source image, it's not going to work out too well because of the way the emboss and the compositing is working. Uh, another thing you can set is a angle slider. Sorry, an angle control. Uh, then you could just do the same thing we just did with the direction here, and you can once again pip whip it to the angle control. And we'll call this uh, something like shift angle. So another thing you might want is the contrast, so we could just have a slider for that as well. And we'll call it the contrast. And once again, you could just pip whip this to the contrast. So really quickly, I'll also go over a plugin I like to use. It's called Fast Chromatic Aberration, uh, Quick Chromatic Aberration. And this allows it to render a lot quicker. Uh, it's really nice because it's uh, actually adding its own things to After Effects to get the chromatic aberration done. So it's not going to be as slow uh, as our preset was. Uh, this is a free plugin and you can find the link somewhere on my Discord server. If you go to uh, the plugins channel, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, you can't go to a how on it. I mean, I usually don't go past 101. I, most of the time I go inside like 100.5 and just keep it down that low. And you have your settings here for like red, red, green, uh, green, blue, and red, red as well. And this is a lot faster when you actually render it. You can see it's it's rendering almost instantly, uh, which is really good because uh, you'll find as you use the emboss preset, uh, it kind of renders slow. Uh, so I really recommend this plugin. Again, you can find it in my Discord server uh, in the plugins channel. So the final thing I want to show you is uh, what I did in the intro. Uh, some really interesting things you could do with chromatic aberration. Uh, so in the intro, I had a optics compensation. So I'm going to go ahead and add the chromatic aberration here. Uh, then I'm going to add the optics compensation. And I'm going to set this to something like 20. I found 20 is typically a good number. Uh, you could reverse this, which is what I did. And we're going to have this chromatic aberration come in now. Uh, so I'm just going to set this to 1 and maybe set this to 101. I just said we could get a really intense chromatic aberration. Uh, let's let's go a little down, uh, probably to 100.5. I think that would be good. Uh, another thing, when you have like a black and white image like this, and you're trying to get it to look more documentary or historical, uh, another thing I like to do is do this levels effect, and we really just want to bring up the blacks. So you have your slider over here, and you can mess with these to. Uh, kind of get it to look a little bit, a little bit nicer. Uh, just make these blacks more pronounced. And of course, uh, go ahead and add an adjustment layer. And everything looks better with a little bit of vignette. So we're just gonna have the CC vignette and bring this up a little bit. See what it's looking like. Actually, I like I like the way 100 looks. So I think that's good as well. So another thing I like to do on images like this is, uh, on this adjustment layer, I'm going to rename this one uh, to Vignette. And I'm going to duplicate it and remove that Vignette effect. And on this one, I'm going to add a Lens Blur. And I'm also going to rename this to Blur. So I'm going to set this to something probably like 7. 
Uh, we don't want to go too intense with this, uh, just something very subtle. And we're going to create a mask for this. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. Uh, just start in this corner and, and kind of bring it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, then inside these settings, I'm going to set it to a subtract mask. And it's going to flip it around for us. I'm also going to add some feather to this. I was just going to put the edges uh, slightly out of focus. I still kind of see a hard line there, so I'm just going to feather it just a little bit more to where the line is not so, not so sharp. I think that's looking, looking all right. I might also increase this maybe to something like 11. See how that's looking. And now you've just got a very high quality photo. Uh, another thing I did in the intro was uh, actually with this optic compensation. Uh, I think I was scaling into the image as well as changing this optic compensation at the same time. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, so we want to keyframe this probably just to come down to zero. Uh, and I think we actually started inside the image. So let's just come in here a little bit. And then let's set all of these to ETs. So I'm going to bring this quality down just a little bit. Uh, a good thing when you have a lot of effects on your lows, if, if you uh, are having lag with it, you can come to the preview over here and just put it on something like two or even one would be good for this. So I'm going to bring these way out just so we can see the effect. And you can see it's just it's just a very interesting effect. It kind of brings some life to the image as we like instead of just looking at a still image, we're kind of like zooming in and, and uh, kind of feels like we're looking at kind of through a macro magnifying glass. Uh, I'm just gonna set this back to one and let it render out. So I turned off the chromatic aberration just so it would render a little bit faster. Um, I'm actually gonna come in here and change these uh, keyframes to start a little. Uh, just slow down towards the end so as we kind of get out of it and we'll see how that looks another thing chromatic aberration is really good for is simulating uh, pixels on screens uh, so you can see in this here uh, i use the chromatic aberration a little bit down here uh, just all over the screen to have kind of that pixel effect and really sell this effect if you want to learn how to do this effect uh, you can click here i have a tutorial on that as well